Hi, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today we're going to move our electric fence, or one of them, and I'll show you generally what's involved with electric fences. We find them a great alternative for temporary fencing. Sometimes we want to get rid of the grass around the shed or something, and that's what we're going to do today. Hang around and see if I get myself electrocuted. First thing I need to do is wind up the fence. We had it out already. We'll undo the fence from before. <clears throat> These are mongrel of an idea, but for a fence where you're going to use it for an extended period of time, they work good. They're just a mongrel of a thing. Pat's now running out the tape, and we'll have to put more posts on and the energizer on and make a gateway so we can get in and out of it. I had the loader out earlier in the day doing another job and as soon as I had it out I just pushed the post in with the loader. It makes it so much easier and quicker. We've got to clear a spot with a whippersnipper where the battery is going to sit. This post here is to put the solar panel on and the energizer. Wherever you put this, you want to make sure that the cattle can't get in and chew your wiring because they will if they can. Make sure that it's outside where your cattle are going to be. So here's everything we got. We've got a 12 volt battery, just a small car battery, an energizer and a solar panel. The solar panel will charge up the battery and the battery will work the energizer. I've sat the battery on a besser block. That way it's up out of the grass and it's also easier for the cables to reach. This side's the positive, so I'm going to put the red one off the solar panel onto the positive, and I'm going to put the black one onto the negative. And that should keep the battery charged. Here we've got 12 volt red, fence live, fence earth, and black 12 volt. So this 12 volt red here, that goes onto the red on the battery. And these are hard to get on, a bit hard to work because you're trying to put two poles on there, but you can do it. Now, the next red one says fence live. That's this one here. And you hook that onto the fence and make sure it can't touch it, anything else, which it probably can there, so I'll adjust that. Okay. So this is the one that says fence live. Now, the other one on here says 12 volt black, that goes onto the black side of the battery or the negative side of the battery, like so. Now we just have one other wire to hook up, and this one is a fence earth. You can hook that fence earth to the post that's in the ground here, or you can have a dedicated post, or you can hook it to the fence over here behind. I'm going to hook it to the fence. This should have an alligator clamp on it. It hasn't. I have a bit of a habit of losing the clamps off the end of the wires. On the unit itself, it says got on off. If you press that on, you'll see that little green light flashing. That means the fence is working. I'll turn it off for now because I don't want to get zapped while I finish setting it up. Okay, it's stopped now. Now it's just a matter of putting the clips on and hooking the fence through the clip and then we can turn the fence on and it should be working.
she's right to that stage. This is the reel on the end, and you see I've got it tied onto the plastic handle so it's not earth to the ground. I'll tighten it up really tight. Over this side it has a pull that stops it running back out. Do that up and have the, the fence nice and tight. If any of the grass is touching the fence, it will earth the fence out. So I gotta go along and make sure none of the grass has touched the fence. I just wanna talk about the height to set the fence. It sort of depends on your cattle. If you've got really little cattle, obviously it'll be lower. And if you've got big cattle, like ours are mostly, we'll have it higher. We'll aim for ours to be at about the height of their belly so that it's not convenient to get their head over the top or crawl under it if it's too high. In this instance, we're setting it about hip height, but our cattle are fairly used to the fence and normally don't go near it. I just went along with the brush cutter and made sure none of the grass was going to touch the fence. Here I've got a bit of green grass and I'm just going to touch it on the end of the fence, the furthest away from the energizer and see if I can feel a tickle off the fence. Ooh. Yep, can't feel it there. Ooh, quite strong there. Late in the afternoon now. The cattle have come in for a feed. They look to be enjoying themselves. It's good they'll eat the grass and that'll save me having to slash it. The one up there hiding behind the shed. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.